Alright, you there. Big old five by six, just what we wanted. First goal, baby. First goal. It's our first one together. <laughs> oh, Aaron. If we were to go, Abe, we can let this place out. Oh, my. You're freaking giant. Heck yeah. I'll take that for the last day, bud. Let's get to work. Stop talking. <laughs> We just woke up in our tent, <laughs> out in the wild. Now we're gonna go shoot an antelope. We're in go country. We're uh, about 50 miles out from the little place we're staying. We're gonna get our stuff together, put our bows together, put our gear together. Dude, what's the plan? Well, um, got a couple goats about two miles west of here. Just gonna kind of play her by ear. Gonna go see. You've got a water hole set up, looking pretty good. I've been scouting it for the past two weeks now. Um, there's been multiple goats, around 20 goats coming in there every day. But we're just gonna kind of play her by ear. Maybe go spot and stock. Just kind of whatever, see whatever's productive, and you know, finish her out and hopefully get something down. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Venture number one. Send it. Setting up a blind over water can be super effective, especially during a drought year. Now, it might not be as fun as spot and stock, but it can be more efficient. Okay, so the water's right there. These goats could come from over this hill right here. Right now, they just ran that way. But um, anyway, here we are. Eric's got his freaking Taj Mahal lawn chair there. And I'm in this I'm in this bikini thing. Got my bikini. It's a thong gun. Your man king. First thing I wanna do is check my side tape and make sure it's a zero. I'm just gonna test this out for your sake to see. You better make sure you don't hit the lawn back of the lawn chair too. Yeah. Yeah, it'll probably be more like that. Way out there. They ain't coming back tonight. Here's the lucky sever right here. This is the sever 2.0. Patience is key when sitting in a hot, sweaty, miserable morning. The good thing about pronghorn is they get thirsty too. If you're able to dig in deep, exercise patience, you're going to have a great opportunity at coming to full draw on a nice pronghorn. Two antelope just came in and I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to shoot because my chair just broke. Go 
are just laying down, chilling. We're hoping they'll be good little decoys for us. They got the wind in their faces. What are you doing there, Voldemort? Eric farted in this up freaking hot blind, so it's covering my nose. Probably shouldn't talk right now either. And I'm sitting on the floor because Eric freaking busted the chair. We've been here for almost uh, four hours. Looks like some antelope got on the feet. New antelope came in the picture back here. Five different antelope, one really solid buck. He got the other buck on his feet, so. Now it's starting to run. Just playing. Maybe they'll work this way towards the water. Maybe they won't. We'll see. The little bucks are up on their feet. They're 110 and closing in. The bigger of the biggest buck that we've seen. He uh, made his way over here. He's bedded down about 260 or so. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but it would sure be nice if they came close to us here. is still better. The little ones are right here. They're right there. Nothing else. Nothing else is acting like it wants any water except for these little dinks. The one in the back is the best. Yeah, I think so. for sure for the water, but they just want to hit the field. Never would have thought, after letting an arrow fly, that these antelope would have come running back to me. They're super curious animals. It just goes to show you, you never know what they're going to do. Keep that in mind on your next outing. That was really exciting. Dude, he came to like 40, so I aimed really, really low. Because I had him at 65. I had my sight pin dialed for 65. And then he was walking, so I should have given him more. I wish I would You forget maybe. to rearrange or you just go a little low? I, w I aimed low. I'm trying to guess. But I'm glad I got one out of me, though. Because <laughs> that was fun. A lot of fun. And 
Got the jitters out. Dude, I killed the goat. You did? Yeah. Heck yeah. Right, literally we're pulling, we're, I was out with my older brother and we're scouting some area out, and right next to the house, uh -huh. we sneak up there and range him 78 yards, come back to full draw, shoot him and hit him right in here, and he ended up bending down, then I had to go put another arrow on him afterwards. But <laughs> And then, uh, Congrats, uh, man. dad ended up shooting a goat. Really? Yeah, and uh, that Texas kid ended up shooting a goat. Dude, what? it's unbelievable. I swear to God, I've never seen it like this. Four oh. goats in the day. I let one fly. We went spot stuck late tonight. I let one fly. I didn't rearrange it. I had him at 65, then he trotted in, and I kind of guessed, but I missed high right. You see all the me on the field? Yeah. Did you see the one? Yeah. Is that, have you know about him? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's my main. Yeah. We're gonna go south, meet yep. up with his brother. Yep, we're gonna head south today, um, do a little spot and stock in action, just try to find some goats in the right place at the right time. Hopefully get something killed. Oh, we'll get something killed. <laughs> Apparently I'm crazy for passing some of those goats yesterday. I didn't know, but I won't be picky today. Good thing I wasn't in the blind. You'd have made me shoot. Oh, I would have totally. Dude, well, you, you passed the big one and you shot at the small one yesterday. Cause that was spot and stock and it's fun. I love spot and stock. I'm the same way, but hey, if there's something blind. Yeah, yeah. First day. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, you gotta you gotta here looking for hunting antelope it's the second day um, and I don't know this hunt absolutely would not be doable without public and private land ownership maps and having those tools at your fingertips is awesome yeah, as you can tell I saved an offline map here in that yellow square so all I have to do is hit go offline and sure enough all these maps will populate as well as it'll tell me exactly where I'm at in reference to the map. So that way I know if I'm close to private, if I'm obviously on public, it gives me land ownership names so I can go knock doors and ask for permission. So, especially when you get these checkerboard type areas, I mean, you have to have a base map. It's like, you're not gonna be able to find access without so it. There's so. uh, probably about 15 goats down in the bottom right up over top of this hill and you guys are just gonna come right up around this backside, and they're hopefully gonna feed because it looks like they're kind of feeding up that hill. And just you know maneuver with the hill, yeah. you know stay on the backside if you have to, and just maneuver whichever way they end up coming up. And I think you guys should be close. I mean, there's a goat right right there. Yeah. are about 300 yards out in the middle of this field. There's not really a play on them. Man, their eyesight's amazing.
on to the next. probably a one two mile loop around there um, <laughs> lots of does cut up little draws there's little draws and nooks and crannies in there that you can't really see without getting in there but uh buck put the slip on no idea where he's at so we're gonna meet up with connor here try another spot It's the morning of the last day. We're tired. I think uh, we're getting the blind. We're gonna load up our waters. It's gonna be hot. Um, we're gonna load up our snacks. We'll be more prepared that way. And we have some uh, better chairs this time. Okay, we're gonna go with water today because we feel like that maximizes our opportunity with it being the last day. The field we're hunting doesn't have a lot of pressure, so we feel like it should be pretty good for to this water. I'm 
make some memories here. Since this was the last day I was able to hunt, getting a pronghorn on the ground with my bow was the top priority. Sure, I'd pass some nice goats, but if I'd have let one fly on that first day, I never would have known what would have been around. And that's why you call it hunting. Sometimes you find the giant you're looking for, sometimes you don't. But if you don't hunt for him, you'll never kill him. But on the other hand, you don't want to go home with an empty cooler or an unnotched tag. I had my opportunities the first two days. I knew that at this point, I was going to fill my tag on any legal buck that came into water. Here he is, so. Beautiful buck. He should eat really, really well. Um, he's not too stiff, so he should be good. Should be some good eating here. Carry him out whole, we got three fruits here. guys thanks for watching episode one of our send it series we're doing a special easton focus giveaway which includes a dozen easton access arrows any spine of your choice six severed broadheads any model in one workhorse bow case to enter all you need to do is like this video subscribe to the muley freak channel and leave a comment on your favorite part of the video we will announce the winner on instagram and snapchat in the following weeks so be sure to follow us stay up to date on all the giveaways also if you want more details on this hunt go to the podcast where we uncover behind the scenes go into more depth about the hunt some of the things that happened that we didn't cover on the episode itself and check it out and subscribe to the podcast thanks for watching guys catch you on the next one <laughs>